Hey Wizard, now that we have the new arbitrage and machine learning tool for Crypto Wizards up and running as of today, let's do some trading. So I'll trade an arbitrage opportunity and then I'll talk about what I just did, how I just did it, how it works and give you some updates afterwards. So trading first, talking later, let's get into it. So first of all, I'm going to select the Binance Smart Chain um, because I don't want to deal with high gas fees with Ethereum right now, etc. And I'm going to filter for a ton of results and just filter by whatever the highest percent is. Um, so you don't have to do it like this, by the way. Most people would be looking for the most recent opportunity. And if they find one, then uh, you can see there's still one here. So that came up at 9.46 a.m. And it looks like that opportunity is still around. Now I've got two options here. I'm either going to click here, which will take me to the platform for trading, or I'm going to click here to do some further calculation. So this 2.3% is what I want to select here. Now, right now it's bringing up a simulator. So it's saying, okay, so let's trade, you know, one inch um, against what is it, WBNB, and then swap it back. Now you might be wondering, what's the point in doing that? Well, what we're using is this open ocean aggregator and we're arbitraging that. I'll talk more on that later. Let's do the trading first. Now, one thing I can do here is just wrap this in BUSD because I'm holding a balance in BUSD. So when I hit wrap BUSD, you can see it's putting the trade for me here in BUSD and bringing it back to BUSD. So it's just a quirky little thing in case you're using a US dollar equivalent stable coin to start with. I'm going to say, let's have a look at this with $20 uh, and just calculate whether there is still an arbitrage opportunity. And it looks like there is. I'm actually going to bring that higher. I don't know what's in my wallet right now. I need to check that. I've got some crypto left from testing, so hopefully still some left. So I think $20, $20 worth should be okay. So let's actually just go and trade that. So I'm going to close out on this. And then what I'm going to do here, here's my, uh, my little ticket over here. I'm going to click on the 6.5%. And that just directs me straight to OpenOcean. And it'll also drop down with the coins that I need. Now, let me check my MetaMask wallet over here just so I can see what's going on. So right now I've got some BNB to approve transactions. That's very important. Make sure you have enough BNB. And then hopefully I've got some BUSD as well, which I do. I actually only have $16 worth here. So I wanted to trade $20. I'm going to trade 15, but nonetheless, let's just get going with it, right? So what I'm going to do here is actually um, swap this over and I'm going to trade, first of all, BUSD because I'm wrapping my trade. And I'm going to exchange this over here for one inch. So I'm going to do that. But first, I'm going to do about 15 BUSD worth over here. Now, just take a look here. Right now on my wallet, we've got 0 0.1872 BNB. Right? So let's go and do that swap now. And that should give me some one inch. So as soon as I go and do that, confirm order. You can see I'm doing a video here, so I'm not really thinking about gas fees. If I was on Ethereum, etc., I'd be thinking a lot more about the gas, about how much profit is there. But because if it's Polygon or Binance Smart Chain, there's very little fees involved. So, you know, if the percentage is big enough, then usually that's going to be fairly good. OK, so let's have a look here and see how that transaction's looking. And that's already happened, right? So if I go to my assets, you can see I've got much less BUSD. If you don't see the token you just swapped for, like one inch, for example, you can import tokens. So here what I'll do is I'll just copy that actually. So I'll copy one inch here. You can see it's copied that address. And, uh, and then I can actually go and import it into my wallet over here. So what I'm going to do is just go assets, import tokens. Okay, so it doesn't recognize the address, but I'm just going to call this one inch over here. And hopefully that's going to, I think it's 18 decimals. It could be wrong. Um, there you go. There it is. One inch. Let's import the tokens. And you can see I've got 29 one inch tokens here in my account. So that's all very good. Let's go back. And that's just if you don't see the token you expect to see, you can add it by adding in the address. Also, make sure that when you're in MetaMask, you're on the right chain, right? So I'm not on Ethereum mainnet right now. I'm on BNB. Anyway, I'm probably going to miss this trade because I'm talking too much. But I'm now going to swap one inch for WBNB. So let's go here. Let's swap one inch, which is the max that I want to swap. And I want to swap it for WBNB because that's the trading opportunity that we found here. 
Um, now I need to do this thing which is called infinite unlock. That just means that I can trade against that token in the future and that's going to cost me nine cents. But once I've done that once, I shouldn't have to approve it again. So for those of you who have never used, you know, like you, you're not used to doing swapping or swapping crypto, etc. This is just something you have to get used to as well, right? So now that we've got that in, um, I'm going to do the swap for WBNB and I'm going to confirm the order over here. So when I go and confirm that order um, and just go and confirm that. So here we are, we can see we've got the WBNB um, in here now. But what I want to do now is take my WBNB and I'm going to swap it back here for BUSD, which is what I started with in the first place. But basically now you can see that 15 BUSD actually ended up being 15.35. BUSD. Okay, so let's take, for example, this IMX one over here. So if I check this over here, and I go in here, I'm not going to wrap it in dollars. Now I'm just going to leave it as it is and hit calculate, we can see there's still an arbitrage showing between these two coins. So when I go and click on this percentage sign, it'll open that up. And you need to make sure it's populating this with the right coins, because the platform doesn't always do that. It's not a crypto wizards thing. It just depends. Sometimes it, it doesn't default it to the right tokens. You just need to watch that. But here it's done it perfectly. So let's just say I've got, I don't know, 20 of these PSPs, for example, and that gives me 1.3673 IMX. If I invert that the other way around, you'll see 1.3673 IMX actually gives me 30.6775 PSP. How does that happen? Well, because this is an aggregator, it's not swapping the price in one place. There are different prices in different markets. So how do you find all of these opportunities that basically they have this opportunity with the pricing? Well, that's what this open trace tool does. That's what we've built it to do, right? So it's basically scanning open ocean all the time. Um, in fact, there's quite a lot of bots running looking for these opportunities. So it's scanning that all the time and then presenting them when it finds something. Now here I'm running on Ethereum, so you need to bear in mind your gas fees are going to be high for doing those transactions on Ethereum. So please don't, don't sign up, don't go and trade this and forget about your gas fees because the gas fees vary, they can change. This calculator doesn't pull gas fees into it and there's many reasons for that. It's a check you need to do. One of the important things to realize here is that we're not dealing with will this transaction go through, yes or no, because every coin I've already tried on open ocean and I can't vouch for open ocean. I can't tell you there's no risk in open ocean. You might lose all your money in one of the trades. I don't know. I haven't experienced that myself, but what I can tell you is they're all going through and they're all going through pretty quickly and they're all going through at a really good price. So whereas with the historical tools on crypto wizards, we always struggled with, is this a coin that's going to absolutely wipe out my profits, etc. This seems to be a much more sensible and straightforward method. Um, that I'm using over here. So that's the open trace tool. You'll notice that flash gap is still here, but it's not the flash gap that you saw on previous videos. If you go through the discord, you'll see traders just started having zero success with that. Um, and the same is going to happen with open trace. But what is happening with flash gap is I'm basically looking at redeveloping that across multiple chains. Um, and it's one of the reasons for rebuilding Crypto Wizards from scratch. I've been building it from scratch again because I wanted to introduce TypeScript. I wanted to introduce um, some Solana arbitrage, etc. There's projects that I'm trying to investigate and I want the freedom to put them into this ArbScan tool, which is now going to house any sort of mini tools within it. So FlashGap does still look for opportunities. You can see, ironically, as I'm talking, it actually just found one. But most of the time you're going to see this right, you're going to see no opportunity showing up here. So one of the things you can do is you can calculate whether this opportunity exists on open trace. So this is what that button will do. But it's not going to allow you to try to execute a flash loan contract on this right now. And the reason for that is it is being rebuilt from the ground up right now. I've just included it in here in case something like this pops up that someone can go and investigate and maybe make some profit on. So a final word on these arbitrage tools, because, you know, they're very different to the rest of the platform. These are always very experimental. What's going to happen? And I've already seen it happen in one day. Crypto Wizards went live this morning 
And I've already seen in one day, if I go to a Binance Smart Chain, um, these opportunities are going pretty quickly. So there are a number of traders, about a third of the people that use crypto wizards will be looking at this sheet. So if you did sign up looking to make profit with this, just remember, you've got a lot of competition, right? So there are people who are hunting, they are looking for opportunities. They understand that it's never going to be perfect. They have workarounds, they have their own things. They, you know, they, they plug this into with that. So if you're new to arbitrage, you know, this is something that I would say is already high risk for you because there are already traders competing for it. This is on the website. You can see it's on CryptoWizards.net. Anyone can see this right now, right? This is not my own private view of it anymore, like when I had it the other day before the tool was up. So just bear that in mind. It's not worth signing up for this unless you can see the value in you doing that. So that's just a quick update there. Um, and it was fun to do a trade together. I will be doing other videos on the other tools. So I mentioned about Z-score for statistical arbitrage before. This is looking a heck of a lot better. Um, I can't mention their name because I don't have their permission, but I did want to say a big thanks to one of the wizards who's helping me on the Forex side. Turns out Forex has a lot more nuances than crypto. And, you know, I should have spotted that. I didn't. But one of the wizards did spot it and he's helping me, you know, get that uh, much better, etc. So that's already looking a heck of a lot better than it was this morning when I relaunched the site from scratch. So basically with Z-Score, for anyone who doesn't know what this is, again, I'll be doing other videos, but this is statistical arbitrage. So it's looking at two crypto pairs where you can go long on one, short on the other, and make a profit irrespective of the direction of the market. Similar to traditional arbitrage, except here we don't really have a liquidity issue, right? So if you're a retail trader like myself, or you know, you're a hobbyist trader like myself, you, you're not going to have a problem there because you're probably not moving vast sums of money which are going to move the whole market. Um, but that's just something to bear in mind. So that's the Z-score tool, new, improved, updated, running automatic backtest for you to give you the results for how this particular pair would have behaved. And then the other thing you're going to find is XTrader. So XTrader is for your data and your machine learning, etc. Um, so, you know, for example, if I wanted to go and do a backtest on a stock, I'm just going to pull Apple right now and I'm just going to use daily data because it's pretty straightforward. You can see here I can actually manipulate and adjust data, etc. I can add uh, special TA signals if I wanted to. So let's say, I don't know, I want RSI added on there on a 14 period average uh, window. Sorry, I can add that in. I'm going to go and save that data. So there's a lot that you can do here with this tool. The other thing I want to do actually now that I've done that is I want to go and remove any uh, error values and just save over that again. So what you can do is just go and back test, right? So here I'm going to go close is greater than, I don't know, um, close from the close price from, I don't know, uh, let's say it's, it's greater than the high price from five days, ago, five days ago and we'll close the trade if um, it's lower than the high price from four days ago, for example, and then I could add in hidden market regimes to analyze, you know, market regimes and how this performs in different market regimes, etc. Again, this video is not the walkthrough for this. It's just to give you a very quick high level overview at what's sitting here. But this is really interesting. You can see net net. Um, I've just and this is on a down market net net. We've actually just about what have we done? Uh, we've made a 1.3% loss. So the benchmark was a 14% loss. So that's pretty cool. Let's see what happens if we actually put this the other way around and also introduce short positions. So I'm going to do the same thing now. Um, but I'm going to reverse my sign. And you know, this could be anything I could be saying RSI is whatever, you know, and for example, RSI 14 day window is greater than you know, so you can put in any conditions you want here, but this is just to give you um, an overview. So here you can see this is actually very profitable now that I've introduced the short positions as well. My benchmark went down, whereas my net position from my trading strategy went up. And here I can show you these are the long trades that were open and closed. And here are the short trades that were open and closed, right? So I had my short open there and I closed it here, uh, etc., which is pretty cool. And then in terms of the HMM uh, states over here, it doesn't really show for Apple for what I've introduced here. It's only finding one hidden state.
But if it finds multiple hidden states, it'll actually show you, it'll give you an idea of what market state um, performed the best, basically, which is something that's really, really cool. So, for example, if we went and added in, I don't know, maybe some S&P data. And I, this, this video is honestly probably the worst YouTube video um, uh, ever posted, really. Is that an ETF? Uh, SPY, sorry. There we are. So SPY. There we are. There's the SPY. Um, <laughs> this is more for me to geek out and actually play with it because this has been in for development for so long. It's nice to just drive it and actually see it working. But here I'm just going to say close is greater than close. Look back one. I'll close it every five periods and add HMM. So let's go and run that back test and see how that looks. And here you can see we've got different market states, different regimes. So yellow is clearly a, uh, like a very highly volatile downtick type period. Yellow re regimes don't do well with the strategy, whereas blue ones do. So now that I know I'm in a blue one, this strategy might make sense. But if it showed that I was right now in a yellow market regime, it might not make sense based on this. So that's something really cool. If you add the HMMs, these stand for hidden mark of models. If you've done the machine learning course on Udemy, you'll have a very good idea on what that is. And then, you know, the other thing is the prediction manager. So here's where we can do some machine learning if we want to, right? So let's go to our data manager and I'm going to, I'm going to remove all of this stuff over here. Um, let's say you had football data or something in here you wanted to make a prediction on, but I'm going to do it on stock data. So I'm going to say, okay, let's predict if tomorrow will be up or down, right? Which is notoriously difficult to do in trading, right? It's very, very difficult to do. Machine learning algorithms struggle with it. I'm not giving it anything sensible here, by the way. I'm just going to run it. If you've used the tool before, you know exactly what you're doing with this. Um, but there we go. This is how uh, quick it is. This is how good it is at doing that. So it's saying it's 79% accurate. But actually, when I look at the test um, data set here, it's really not that it's really not that great. Here's the summary report. I can have that for prediction, for test, for training. Uh, I've got my confusion matrix, my feature importance to tell me which columns are the most helpful for making that prediction. And you can see here, you know, my accuracy is 80%, but I gave it the open price, right? So it has the open price, so it's able to cheat, right? Um, so that's something to bear in mind as well. I'm giving it data that's really cheating uh, here in this particular example. And then here, it actually gives me the last few rows, whatever I told it to. So, you know, you can change how much data you wanted to spit out as a prediction for you to read. Um, you can change the hyperparameters, etc. You know, you can do whatever you want, basically. But it'll tell me, for example, here, it's saying that it's predicting tomorrow will be a down day. And the model feels 60.5% confident that that's going to be the case. So... A lot more deep dive needs to happen on this stuff um, over here. It's way too much for me to cover in one video. It's a lot of talking, but I'm so glad to have the new site up. It's so much faster. It's not completely without bugs. I'm sure you're going to find bugs and email me as usual. Like, hey, I found a bug. Can you look at fixing this? But it is so much better. Honestly, it's so much faster. And I just, again, wanted to say thanks um, to all of you for supporting the channel, for supporting the platform and for getting value out of it. Until the next one, take care and talk soon.